In the UK, habitat degradation and climate change are taking their toll, with many species survival reliant more and more on dedicated individuals. Now, the UK may seem like a relatively small, tiny island, but it is an island home to some spectacular wildlife. But like many species found around the world, the animals that live here are also in steep decline. And that's because of habitat degradation, farming practices, and of course, climate change. In this series, we will be visiting the people on the front line of conservation here and around the world. The people that are ensuring our wildlife stands a fighting chance. We have travelled to the heart of Devon, where a team of committed conservationists are striving to protect an iconic species of the British countryside. We are here with the Barnow Trust, who today are relocating a Barnow they've been caring for for the last five weeks, so he can be released back into the wild. But first, one of their conservation officers, Rick Lockwood, has the task of catching the Barnow. So we're now going to go and get the bar now ready for release. And first we need to go into the hospital where Rick is here and he's getting the box ready. The team aim to release as many sick and injured owls back into the wild as possible, like this one today. This owl was picked up by a member of the public. This bird was a fallen owlet, so it had prematurely left the nest box, was then brought to us, and we've spent now about five weeks increasing its body weight, and it's been in an aviary so it can learn uh, and strengthen its, its flying, and now it's ready to go back into the wild. I think if the bird hadn't been picked up that day, it would have died. It was very weak and underweight. It's great when you can actually get to release an owl back into the wild. Yeah, unlock this for you. <laughs> Before the owl can be translocated, Rick will perform final checks to ensure he's in good health and fit for release. You don't realise how small they actually are until you see them close up. I've only ever seen them flying around in the wild, but they are, they're tiny, aren't they? Holding bags like this are used when dealing with many wild bird species in order to enable teams to perform health checks. Covering the eyes minimises the stress for the animal. Then, after the owl passes with flying colours, he is then ready to travel back home. The Barnow Trust used mobile aviaries to transport the owls back into the area in which they were originally rescued from. So we're taking the bird back and releasing it at the site where it was hatched, mm -hmm. where its parents' bird had their nest. And while we're there, we'll have a look at the nest box, see if there's any improvements we can yeah. make. Rescued owls are relocated back to where they were found, as this gives them the best possible chance of survival, as their habitats are proven to support owl populations. But just before we were about to leave, we get an unexpected arrival. So they've just had a phone call and a barn owl uh, has just been brought into the sanctuary. It was called in by a member of the public and it seems to be quite emaciated. We don't know what state it's currently in, uh, so we're going to go and see how it is. For this we are joined by Dr Matteo Ruse, Assistant Conservation and Science Officer at the Barn Owl Trust, who begins emergency checks and treatment. It's clear to see the difference in condition and energy levels between this owl that's just been brought in and the owl that we're taking back to the wild. The team will keep the owl under close observation as they estimate it hasn't eaten for 36 hours, drastically reducing its chances of survival through the night. But thanks to the expertise of the team, we now prepare to translocate our barn owl, who was in a similar condition just five weeks ago. As we arrive in Exmoor National Park, Rick goes about setting up the aviary. The owl will spend the next two weeks inside the aviary, 
and this is what's known as a soft release, giving the owl time to readjust to its new location and surroundings, giving it the best chance of survival. So he's had his one hour 45 minute journey to his new location and he's now in his aviary and he'll be here for the next couple of weeks before they open the hatch and the team here they're going to be feeding him every day and checking in on him so we are going to come back here in two weeks time for when they open the lid of the aviary. The amount of work that goes into rehabilitating and releasing just one barn owl is considerable but this process is becoming more and more common as the species is facing a multitude of threats. So the main one is loss of habitat, the climate is changing also, so they're facing increasing threat from um, freak weather events. It's just the unpredictability really, there's a lot more severe storms and heavy rainfall, um, so periods of that are difficult for barn owls because their feathers aren't very water repellent, um, so they get wet quickly, so they're not able to feed during those periods. And it's the same if you get periods of extended drought, um, which we've had recently, the field voles that they, that they largely eat, their numbers go down when you have periods of drought, so it's difficult then also for barn owls at a time when they're trying to feed their young. And then also a lot of young birds die on roads at this time of year, a lot of birds that are dispersing throughout the countryside. Major roads um, take a real toll on the population numbers. With the increasing pressures of habitat loss and fluctuations in our climate directly affecting barn owl populations, as well as entire ecosystems, the future for barn owls is ever dependent on charities like the Barn Owl Trust. As two weeks have passed, we headed back to Exmoor National Park to check in on the owl and meet Nick, who has been monitoring and feeding him prior to his release. Hello, you all right? How How's it been, all right, good? good. All fun and games, quite uneventful really. Yeah? He sleeps when I'm here and then, I suppose it really. <laughs> Chuck some food in and hope he's doing all right. Have you seen him at all? A couple of times. Yeah? Keeps himself to himself. Nick then opens the aviary, allowing the barn owl to leave whenever he chooses. So that's it, the aviary hatch is now open and of course this is a wild animal so he could come out within the next 15 minutes or it could be sometime later on tonight but he's gone through the rehabilitation process and at some point in the next 24 hours he'll be back into the wild where he belongs. Animal species across the UK are under threat from a range of multifaceted and ever-changing factors. But thanks to the expertise, hard work and dedication of groups and individuals, there is hope for species like the barn owl, one of the UK's most iconic species.